Achille Mbembe, Theory Augmented. This is a uh, one school for a lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at S4 University College, which I would like my wonderful students to watch by the 19th of October, uh, when we meet in 2021, of course. So you would be forgiven for finding um, this particular bit of the reading list difficult, because a lot of people struggle with uh, Mbembe's um, thought. And you have to ask yourself, um, is this because um, the thought is difficult? Is it because he hasn't expressed himself well enough? Or is it because it is foreign to me? And, um, and doubtless, um, all of these um, could be true. Um, Achille Mbemba um, works in, um, in South Africa and works deliberately um, in order to bring African thought to bear on our political um, problems of today. He's also a francophone and, um, and a lot of um, French um, thought is criticized for being difficult to understand and he tries to understand it and use it. So reading Mbemba is um, both an exercise in learning from somebody else but it's also an exercise in becoming better at hearing voices which we're not used to and that's why I really want you to struggle with it. When you know something is going to be a little bit difficult, what you do is you scaffold. You make it easy, if, easy for yourself as best as you can. So I've already recommended that people find a version in their own language if they can. Um, but also it's important to um, note the connections to what you know um, and to um, be particularly structural with your reading. Um, so take notes of, um, of the introduction and the conclusion before you read a chapter and try and work out what he's getting at, at, at the end of each chapter. So today I'm going to, he does, he does refer to a lot of the thoughts that we've already um, gone through in this course, so I'm going to try and pick out a couple of these um, so that we can um, talk about what, what he says is, uh, the way what he says is different from um, what previous people have said. Very often um, he will take it a little bit further um, and insert the experience of the colonized, and most often this is related to the work of um, the other Francophone um, philosopher, um, great philosopher of the 20th century, Franz Fanon. Um, and he very often points out that they are unfinished in many ways, he applies them in particular situations, and, um, and will maybe um, try to correct their race blindness. And so we're going to try and correct our own uh, race blindness um, in what follows. The state of exception we've already discussed, so uh, this is Agamben's idea, and um, and like I say, uh, Mbemba does um, in many ways just apply it to situations that he talks about. But he also um, he wants to emphasize a particular work of uh, application of Agamben's idea of state of exception in the state of war, um, and points out that um, states of exception are there for the sake of war, just as in the Cincinnati example that we started with. Um, and this state of war means that nations do prepare their citizens for the state of exception, for to, to be war machines. Um, and a lot of the post Second World War um, apparatus of our nation states is all about preparing um, the nation states for an uh, the demands of effectivity that they needed to exert during the Second World War. Um, and um, and a member will th then take it a little bit further and point out that in order to trigger a state of exception, everyone's got to be afraid. And what are the roots of this fear? Why have the states of exception been exerted against foreign, um, uh, against foreign um, citizens um, of people who are not like me? Um, and what are the roots of the fear? And that's why, in, especially in the Fanon chapter of the Necropolitics um, book, he goes quite deeply into psychological analysis of uh, people, people's fear, and, and particularly the fear of sexual violence. The other um, area which we are with which we are familiar is uh, that of the leprosy and the plague model that, um, that Foucault um, introduced us to. And in many ways, it would be right to say that um, where Foucault talked about leprosy in the Middle Ages, Mbemba wants to talk about a penal colony, because, of course, when the unit of politics is a state rather than a city, then you don't just keep people outside your walls, but you send them, um, you send them somewhere else. And this is what the penal colony actually did, of course. And the equivalent of the plague uh, model um, in, in today's society, again, on, on a state level rather than on a city level, 
will be camps, and that was internment camps, concentration camps, but also refugee camps, uh, which are admittedly different phenomena. But he talks about them as a way of um, of arranging exceptional space within the um, uh, within the the nation in such a way that you can control people's movements. And where Foucault and Agamben refer to what we would refer, what we would think of as normal politics, um, Mbembe points out that there are real um, instances of violence going on in the camps of today. That there are um, historically there have been and there are ongoing instances of death and torture um, in, in the in, in the camps of which we know, whether that be in colonial or former former colonial powers, or in places like Guantanamo Bay. Um, so Mbembe is directing his um, his critique towards something which is less symbolic, I think, and more real life, um, real life and death situations than we find in, in Foucault and Agamben's work. So he talks about um, the state of exception and he talks about the organization of spaces of confinement. And in all of these things, he's criticizing a view of knowledge, knowledge of humanity, um, and uh, criticizing a view of humanity, who is human, who needs to be treated humanely, um, which, which boils um, other people down to an object of my knowledge and uses our knowledge to, um, to describe and divide and categorize and control other human beings, rather than using knowledge to turn in on myself and understand what, um, what my tendency towards violence might mean. He, begins, he returns again and again to this critique of European ideas of the other. Um, so talking about the state of exception on page 77, he says that um, colonies could be ruled in absolute lawlessness, lawlessness uh, is due to the fact that the racial denial of any common bond between the conqueror and the native. In the conqueror's eyes, savage life is just another form of animal life, a horrifying experience, something alien beyond imagination or comprehension. So yes, this division between my knowledge of myself and my knowledge of other people. And he then takes it further, and on page 46, he talks about the colonial perspective and um, talks about the person who knows as the zero point of world orientation and other people as those with whom I can never completely blend this asymmetry between me and you, between the knower and the people of, um, whom I know and have responsibility for organizing. And that's, that's something that we, which he considers a colonial knowledge. And that's why his political program, which he declares on page 40, is all about a new idea of what democracy is all about. Not about including the other, but about, um, but about acknowledging that I am the same as other people. And he says, we're going to have to think through democracy beyond the juxtaposition of singularities, as much as beyond the simplistic ideology of integration. And in, the, in addition, a democracy to come will rely on a clear-cut distinction between the universal and the in common. The universal implies inclusion in some already constituted thing or entity, where the in common presupposes a relation of co-belonging and co-sharing. 